welcome back to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosport. We're your hosts, Daniel and Alex, and welcome to our F1 debrief. This is round four, uh, the Japanese Grand Prix. Alex, how are you tonight? Yeah, good, mate. I'm ready to do the rock and roll after a more entertaining race. It was enjoyable, um, given the winner, but we'll get into that. Um, first off, but just uh, let's get out of the way. Um, if you just noticed just then, we have partnered up with Slipstream Autosports um, to bring some more epic motorsport action to your faces and hopefully to expand on that in the future. So stay tuned for more. But with that being said, let's get straight into the weekend. Alex, what did you think of the weekend as a whole? As a whole, besides Max winning, it wasn't actually too bad. Like, it wasn't a snooze fest. There was a lot of action um, in terms of strategy. Everyone was on a different one. It was kind of cool. Yeah. It was weird, though. It was like, even in Max 1, it was still somewhat enjoyable. There were, yeah, I know, I get what you mean. Like, he, he pulled away, despite that, right? Despite being sure. 10, year, 10 years oh. down the road. There were some cracking battles and some cracking overtakes, which we will get into as the night progresses. Because um, there's a couple I want to notice, notably mention. Um, but, yeah, like, let's start off with the biggest talk of the weekend, the lap one crash with Alex Albon and Daniel Ricciardo, uh, which actually brought out the safe, uh, red flag, which delayed the race for, what, half hour. Um, and then you it told got me because I got home late. <laughs> uh, and so then, I missed the red flag. But were you, in, you were in time for the race, though? Yeah, I got the rest. Oh, there you go. It worked out quite nicely. But, it worked out well for me. <laughs> my God, I hate to always talk about Daniel Ricciardo. Alex, Alex can't handle the pressure right now. The camera's gone. Um, uh, uh, let me put my phone on. <laughs> very professional, uh, as you can see. Mate, we are top notch. Um, <laughs> the situation, I hate having them always mention about Daniel Ricciardo when there's a problem. Um, unfortunately he has had a shocking year and unfortunately, you know, he hasn't been able to prove himself. Of course he was actually was decent this weekend. I have to say he did, uh, miss out practice one because he gave it to, um, another driver. Uh, and then he got barely any running in FP two because of it was, uh, rain affected. So to have less practice sesh, practice time than Yuki, he did really well overall. It's a shame we didn't get to see what he could do, unfortunately. Yeah, and um, I think that would just be a higher points, him and Alex, when they had the incident. So, yeah. Look, not ideal and not helping his cause of you got to do good before Miami point of view. That's not good, gone well. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what this is going to do in terms of that. If it's going to be put into jeopardy more, if they think, oh, you know, he actually did pretty well, and, and you know, despite the crash, he had a good pace or whatever, and because like, he qualified only one tenth by Yuki, so yeah. Look, at the end of the day, he's slower, and you know, in the couple of races last year where Lawson was in there, he did qualify Yuki a little bit, and yeah, I. I as much as this hurts to say being an Aussie, I, I still think he will be out of the car by, by me. But, yeah, he needs, like, a podium finish in China or something to keep his career going. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, He needs a point finish fast. Otherwise, that seat will be, like, what, I'm not talking about the red, the RB seat. I'm more talking about the Red Bull seat. Like, that's probably long gone. Um, it's That was long gone, I reckon, a, a, a yeah. while ago. But the factors we need to consider is, obviously, he wasn't there last year for the Japanese Grand Prix, so this is the first time in that car he's driving around that track. Um, in saying that, though, Liam Lawson was the exact same last time as well, um, last yeah. year. But in saying that as well, Liam Lawson was actually, I think, ahead of Yuki during the Japanese Grand Prix. Or they were neck and neck the whole race um, last year. So, um, it is Liam Lawson finished in front of Yuki. Yeah, so there you go. It is a very, yeah. or is it? I hate talking about it, but unfortunately, uh, as we progress through the season, uh, and still zero points, yes, it was, you know, 
he did, didn't have you know he didn't have a chance to prove himself this weekend in the Grand Prix. Um, time's running out, unfortunately, and I I at least hope we can still see because I love you. Um, I love Daniel, but I also love Liam, uh, and I think he deserves a seat as well. So. It, you know, it's a it's a tricky tricky thing. Uh, let us know in the that's, comments that's the what you guys think as well. Uh, what were you going to say? I'm going to read the chat while you mention what you're going to. No, talk that's about. fine. Like, yeah, as, as Aussies, it does suck that this is happening for Daniel. And look, unfortunately, I kind of said this years ago. Like, obviously, with this podcast didn't exist with us and mates when Ricardo left Red Bull for bloody Renault. I was like, this is going to destroy his career. And lo and behold, it has. Besides the win in Monza with McLaren and a couple of podiums here and there with Renault and McLaren, no, you can say everything after Red Bull was a failure. Yeah, you're not wrong there. From the moment That's he sad. joined Renault, he had that crash in Australia uh, before he even entered turn one. And I remember him retiring from that race and... It has. It's been like that since, pretty much. Unfortunately for Danny, obviously we've had some good moments, but uh, not like not not compared not to when he was at Renault. No. Um, no. Let's have a quick look at the chat on YouTube. Jared Crab uh, says, beginning to wonder about RB Visa strategy. Why they didn't put Daniel on new soft tires behind Yuki? Um, yeah, that is actually interesting because actually Danny actually said something about that in the interview. Uh, saying he just had no grip on the medium tyres. where Because the thing is, everyone at the front end had mediums and stuff, but the, a lot of drivers at the back had softs, and he was the odd one out, and he didn't have any grip. Uh, he got a poor start. Um, you know, it still doesn't explain the crash that he had. That was a bit of a weird one. Because if you look at Albon's view, he and turned into him. to do with tyres. He had nothing to do with tyres. He literally just drove into him, technically, but... He he wouldn't. I don't think he saw him at all. Um, but Albon did a, have a good. I think I think Stroll was on his left, and so mm. he was like, "Do I cut Stroll off and upset a Canadian, or do I take out Albon and upset a Williams driver?" <laughs> the, the, the difference with that, with that is, yeah, think, um, at least Aston have Alex a special. Alex more calm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. yeah, I think Williams probably can't afford that damage. And we will get into Actually, that. I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. We will get into that. I didn't that even as think well. about that. Oh, so, mate. <laughs> Actually, funny are thing. Gonna, about are that. they going to do the, the Gene calls? Gene, need oh. more money. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about that, they, the most, the, the, the most crashes a car had this week, or the most offs, was a Williams this weekend. Um, which to is fair, that's quite like ironic. That's almost every other weekend. Oh, well, yeah, but. It's quite ironic now that in, exactly. Um, Max Verstappen, the goat, reckons Carlos is driving like Prime Schumacher at the moment. He's doing very well, but he ha- he hasn't. You know, he's. I got to say, he is maximizing uh, what he can out of that Ferrari. Um, I've written here. Uh, he, I, in my opinion, he's the second best driver on the grid at the moment. Um, I said that last week. Yeah. Um, oh, last race. Which. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I totally agree, 100%. Yeah. So if, if that Ferrari was better, you know, because he had a good last stint there. He was able to get ahead of um, yeah. his teammate. Um, so, no, he, he's definitely I, – I, I semi-agree with you there, Max. Uh, Tiny Lion King, I can't stand the jazz with boost and the fact that he can't run. Yeah, yeah, that supercars chat is – uh, check out our TikTok if you what? want information right. about that, uh, about the Brody Kostecki coming back. And we'll talk about that uh, a lot more in the lead up to Topor in a couple of weeks. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, no, definitely a massive talking point for sure. Um, back to F1. <laughs> so yeah, other than that, there was a good moves. Um, thing is, uh, back to Daniel Ricciardo. Yuki Tsunoda though. He drove very, very well this weekend, I have to say. Th- those moves he pulled, uh, those outside overtakes. The one on, the one on Stroll. Was it Stroll? Stroll and Hulkenberg, I think. Um, yeah, they were good. They were. <laughs> oh, that. Nah, that, that was cool. Um, and that was cool. It, it, he, yeah, he's he's definitely a, a quick kid, that's for sure. Uh, and we saw a, cool, a lot yeah. of battles as well um, with everyone else as well. I- 
I'm not, I'm not against Yuki at Red Bull, to be honest. Yeah. Everyone's been saying it for years, but I'm not I'm not opposed to it. You don't if want him Perez were to go. <sighs> See, actually can we we'll talk about that quickly, okay? The whole because apparently according to I think Toto or someone talk but someone up there, um or Toto expects a announcement regarding like a big driver announcement in the next couple of weeks. Um so it could potentially be or Carlos. Or just in, I think he just reckons there'll be a, an announcement regarding that because um, Carlos, you know, if he goes to Red Bull, then obviously we know Sergio's gone. Or I, 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 the more I think about it, the more I least think Max will be leaving Red Bull. Um, can't, man, unless no. unless the paycheck is like, oh, it has to be through the roof. Yeah. Exactly. There's no other reason he'd leave. Why would you leave? No, no, especially after this weekend. That was obviously the, after the last car. three years. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> but screw this weekend, like that was 2021 to now, like dominance. Well, 2021 wasn't dominance, but 22 since. Oh my gosh, like yeah. yeah, that has to be a massive, massive paycheck in front of on the table for him to even consider leaving. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't. But no. the whole Sergio thing is a bit, I don't know. It's tricky because... It's bad for Sergio in a way because, like, here he is with his seat. Nothing's been said and all these rumours keep popping up. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is about him is he's doing what he's meant to be doing right now. He's he's gotten two... Um, no, three one-two finishes now. Yeah, with Red Bull, oh, yeah. and funny fact, actually, for the year, every race so far this year, we've had a one-two finish for. Oh, with, yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously the Red Bull one-two for the first two, and then we had, of course, the beautiful one-two Ferrari. Uh, now we're back to Red Bull, but um, I reckon he, he, it's tricky because he's doing what he's signed, he's contracted to do. He's giving Red Bull the yeah. one-two finish. So who knows? Maybe he might actually end up staying there. Um, so yeah. there's no reason right now for him to not be there. Yeah, but personally, I would love Signs there purely because if Signs is driving like this in a Ferrari, imagine him driving in the top tier Red Bull car. Oh yeah, it'd be amazing. It'd oh, be unbelievable. I'd love to see that. Um, but I will tell you what, uh, the second fastest thing of the weekend was Valtteri Bottas's pit stop compared to his progress so far this year. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, I messaged you. That. Did you hear Ted? You missed yeah, it, didn't you? I missed it, but I saw the. Uh, he is a savage. Oh. He is a savage. <laughs> so I don't know if people in the comments are like, "What the hell are we talking about?" But if you didn't hear during the during the race, um, Crofty handed it over to Ted about the salad pit stop. He goes, "Oh, yeah, pretty good uh, standards from." Oh, sorry, no. Pretty good pit stops considering Sauber's standards this year. It's an eight-second stop, so it's better than uh, what they've done all year. Um, and I'm like, wow. Wow. The savagery from Ted. Yeah. Just like mic drop. Done. Literally, Kill. though. <laughs> and then the worst part is, <laughs> Joe Gwen, you came in the pits 10 seconds later and they did a worse stop. Yeah. Well, he didn't even leave the pits after that at some point. But we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah, then he came in two more times, yeah. <laughs> well, he, had, he unfortunately suffered gearbox issues again. Apparently, he, yeah, he uh, Australia, he it was quite similar as well. So they're not having a good year. Um, but Bottas, though, he showed some promise in terms of pace. He, uh, definitely, yeah, what happened to him? Yeah, I'd pit stop, mate. <laughs> yeah, probably. There was probably some other stuff as well. well he, but... was, he was in front of Yuki. Yeah, well, actually, and in Yuki saying that... Tenth. In saying that, uh, it was did you, you saw that five cars pitted all at once, right? Um, no, I missed that part. I did so see them come out, but I never saw the replay. Yeah, so they all pitted, and Yuki got ahead of all of them. So he uh, overtook everyone in the pits, pretty much. That. So um, that was pretty cool to see, and that's probably what helped him. Uh, besides from those insane moves he did on the weekend, uh, Matt, how you going, buddy? What do you reckon about Brody Kostecki coming back to supercars? Um, I love it. I'm happy that Brody's back, but I'm not a fan of the controversy. It does help our um, our social media side of things. Uh, but 
Um, in terms, <laughs> in terms of um, him driving, I'm happy to. Any, I'm, I'm glad that he's back in a race seat. Um, and yeah, we will talk about more of that when, uh, in the lead up to Topor in a couple of weeks. But also, I'll be talking about that on TikTok. So stay tuned for that. Um, which you can also check our socials on the screen here, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on Spotify, then you, the links are also in the description. So everything is there for you. Uh, let's talk about the Oscar Piastri versus George Russell. Um, they had a, they were <laughs> interesting weekend uh, qualifying. Russell almost bumped into Oscar Piastri in, in the pit lane. Uh, he okay. was fined five thousand euro, and then on track, uh, the back at the final chicane, um, they touched during uh, do- towards the back end of the race. Um, so they yeah, right. they couldn't um, stay away from each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, but uh, in saying Oscar that, had a bit of a disappointing right, uh, weekend in terms of Lando, like it was twenty. No, yeah, five, yeah. Seconds, oh, well, fifteen seconds behind him. Yeah, well, Lando did say he mentioned how he was uh, some seconds behind Max last year, and now he's double that this year. Um, that's all you really need to say about it. Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're not where they are. obviously, you know, Jap- Japan has been moved from later to earlier in the season. Um, yeah. So, but in saying that, still, McLaren, you know, they've got some work to do. They're still ahead of Mercedes at the moment. Uh, in terms of pace, from the looks of it, Mercedes still look like they're struggling. Toto actually admitted that they're basically doing live testing at this point, um, trying to see what right. works. Um, it is a shame to see, given how you know they were dominating the era prior. Um, yeah, that's sad. And plus, Lewis looks done; like he's ready. To, he's watching Carlos in in his car. <laughs> He's watching a Ferrari finish on the podium every week. Exactly. And uh, here he is um, finishing ninth. Yeah. Uh, Sol Sniper, how are you, mate? Uh, I mean, like, it was just going to be a race where Red Bull dominate, but, yeah, there was lots of overtaking. It, th- yeah, I was worried when Red Bull 1-2 was happening, but I'm glad we saw um, some decent action, which was great. Um, a lot of talking points, too. And uh, Williams, yeah. um, my God, like I said before, they they didn't know how to stay on the track. Logan Sargent almost gave James Val a heart attack during the race after almost hitting the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and then also reversing back onto the track with oncoming traffic almost. Um, he would have been so nervous this weekend. Uh, so what happened oh, is... all the Yeah, all the memes about how... Sergeant crashes and oh Alex, yeah, I'll give you my car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so for reference, Alex's car, which was Logan's car from Australia, which is now they've got pretty much the oh, exact yeah, because yeah, Logan's oh, got yeah, sorry. Alex's damage. Yeah. yeah, well, it doesn't matter now; they're both screwed anyway. Um, Alex's yeah, Alex's Japan car has been taken back to Grove to get sorted um, in time for China. So, still no no news of regarding if they'll get a new chassis or not. But see what happens. Um, it's crazy how they can't do that. Apparently, we're at four twenty likes on uh, TikTok. So I appreciate it, guys. We I can't see it on my computer screen, unfortunately. Um, but I, we do appreciate all the support. If you do enjoy this, by the way, and you're watching live, be sure to follow and span the likes both here and YouTube. Uh, of course, give us a five star rating on Spotify if you want as well. Helps us get out there more. Uh, and last but not least, we've got Alpine. Um, they, did you saw that TikTok I sent uh, you? <laughs> last and worst, yeah. That's someone saying, oh, the Alpine's still on track doing red flag. It was a blue tractor. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't got much to say about them other than the fact that they made contact oh. uh, at the restart. Um, oh, I, I was going to say something better, but that's right. Oh, you, you want to say something about it? Yeah, they suck. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, in other, news, in other news, water is wet. Uh, Soul Sniper, what was your thought <laughs> with Daniel crashing with William on lap one? Um, 
yeah, it's a tough one. It, from Albon's case, like we said earlier, he t- he looks like he turned into him, but it's probably like a Matt Payne sort of thing here. He didn't know he was there. Um, it's yeah, but you know, like, like I said before, it was it was stuck in the middle. It wasn't like yeah, exactly. He just turned. There was a Aston Martin to his left. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. he was either going to piss off oh, a potential yeah. boss with Lawrence Stroll. I'm just making jokes here. He's not. He's not going to Williams, <laughs> uh, or just crash out another Williams, which they used to, unfortunately. Uh, so, with that being said, let's get into the race results. Uh, so, obviously, Max Verstappen is the winner of the Japanese Grand Prix. Actually, he won. Is it's the third time he's won, um, and the only person who has done that is Michael Schumacher, apparently. Uh, so, uh, on like social the media, Grand Prix. yeah, the like in a row. He's won three Japanese Grand Prix. In oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got uh, Sergio Perez for making another Red Bull 1-2. Uh, and then we've got Sainz after brilliant driving third with Charles Leclerc behind. Uh, he had a tough weekend. Um, of course, you know, Jules Bianchi uh, passed away 10 years ago um, at the same track. So he would have been quite mm-hmm. emotional this weekend. But in my opinion, he drove very well yeah. considering. Uh, then we've got Norris and Alonso, and then we've got Russell, Piastri, Hamilton, and Sonoda um, getting in, getting a point in his home Grand Prix. And then we've got Hulkenberg, Stroll, Magnussen, Bottas, uh, and then we've got Ocon and Gasly. The highest Alpine has been for a while. And then we've got Sargent as the what, last of the finishes in seventeenth. Uh, 18th, we've got Joe Guan Yu. Unfortunately, Gearbox ruined his day. And then, of course, we've got Ricardo and Albon in. Uh, those last few spots there. Uh, have a quick look at the driver's standings. Uh, we've got Max Verstappen leading with 77 points with Perez behind. Leclerc and Sainz, um, that hasn't changed. Um, shout out to Sainz, though, who obviously missed a round uh, and is still, you know, in the top five. Uh, and then we've got Norris, yeah, Piastri, uh, Russell, Alonso, Hamilton, and Stroll. That's your 10. Uh, Sonoda, Oli Beerman is still 12th. Um, that's he's doing really well there, considering he's not driving. Hulkenberg, Magnussen, Alonso, uh, Joe Yu, Ricardo, Ocon, Gasly, Bottas, and Sargent. And when I said Alonso, I, reckon, I meant Albon. <laughs> My spelling. I, reckon, I genuinely think that uh, Ollie Behrman can finish like fifteenth, sixteenth in the championship, like, and he's done he's only one race. Well, no, he's not going to finish last. That's for sure. I can't see Sergeant gaining a point either of the Alpines at this at this rate. Who else? Uh, maybe even no Salders. Like genuinely, he could finish like fifteenth. <laughs> no, you, you're not wrong there. I rec- I, I agree with you. I got to have to agree it's with sad, you. Sad, but it's true. Tr- it's true. It's true, and it also shows how well he bloody drove there in Jeddah. Um, yeah. <laughs> to be able to do that, it's quite an achievement. Uh, and have a quick look at the team That's standings. Ridiculous. Red Bull leads the way still with 141 points. Then we've got Ferrari, uh, the McLaren, who's ahead of their engine supplier, uh, which is fourth. Aston, fifth. RB, sixth. Haas, Williams, kick. And last but not least, Alpine. Uh, they've actually got points. Um, it's actually participation points. Um, so they don't actually count to the championship, but in our hearts, they count. So, Alex. That is like inside it. That is it for the Japanese Grand Prix. Who would you? Who who is your LTM driver of the day? Um, probably Carlos Sainz again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can't see anyone else. Like actually, you know, I don't know. Like he he was his strategy wasn't brilliant, but he made it pretty good. Actually, him or Leclerc. Leclerc did, did he do one stop? I think no. so. I, I can't recall. No. I don't have a record. I don't have it written yeah. down here. Um, no, but um, he, Le- Leclerc did stop seven, so maybe Leclerc. But yeah, either for well, Leclerc got the official driver of the day. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I agree with you with signs. I've written here uh, either Carlos or Sonoda because signs. Yeah, you know, he so. did. He drove very well, but but Sonoda, those moves really, really impressed me. <laughs> Um, they were fun yeah, to watch. I mean, he was trying to impress everyone. Exactly. And plus the home Grand Prix sort of spectacle. Um, 
he would have been buzzing over that. So I deserved it. Because you said signs, I'm going to give it to Sonoda just to be a bit different. Um, but I do Fair agree. Enough. I do agree with you with the signs there, though. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so overall, what would you give the weekend a rating out of ten? Oh, um, seven, seven, six. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. Seven points six out of ten. Just okay. because it was exciting despite the Red Bulls, you know. It was more exciting yeah, than Australia. More... If Australia had that amount of overtaking and racing and stuff, plus the, obviously the opening laps of the yeah. Australian Grand Prix, that would have been a nine. But Yeah. Now uh, speaking of that, do you I, I don't think it was terrible though. No, I, I quite enjoyed it. Do you have um your predictions for from last last time out, you have it written down somewhere. No, but I remember saying McLaren would be <laughs> much better than they were. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I I probably should write them down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so I've written mine down. Right, so uh, we'll have a look here. Obviously, Max got P one as a uh, big, you know, wow. Uh, and then I've written signs. Unfortunately, he got P three, not P two. Uh, and then I've got Perez and P3, who finished P2. Uh, and then I've got Piastri and Leclerc. So I was, I've got majority of those names up there. Just got them wrong order. Uh, and then yeah. I said Ricardo is just behind Yuki, technically in quali. Uh, <laughs> and then here's the painful <laughs> thing. Half the, <laughs> the painful thing is RB double points. So we don't talk about that. Um, that didn't happen at all. What you got one point? I got one point. No, I got two points because I said Max will win. <laughs> or is that no? Is it like Yuki got one point? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, Jared says Yuki will probably follow Honda to Aston if Stroll moves. It's hard to see if Stroll moves. I don't think is if Stroll moves. I don't think he'll be moving to a different team. I reckon Stroll will be done. I don't think anyone else. Not being mean to Stroll, but I mean, he's there because of his father. So. <laughs> Let's face it. I'm so proud of my son. But yeah, if, if if Yuki doesn't end up in that Red Bull seat, I can highly see that happening um, for sure. Um, so next round obviously is round five, the Chinese Grand Prix uh, at the Shanghai International Circuit. The first time uh, Formula One is back at that circuit since 2019. So it has been a while. We are yet to see how these cars go around there. Uh, Alex... Should we do some predictions for China? Uh, I haven't written anything down for reference. Um, I will. I will this time. Um, no, yeah. Uh, ooh. But before you do that, Baden, why do you guys talk F1 when all you do is V8s? Yeah, that's true. And But uh, we actually do a lot more than V8s. TikTok, obviously, V8s is our primary focus, but we're trying to expand here at LTM now uh, that we've partnered with Slipstream. Uh, we, on YouTube, we do our F1 and Supercar podcast as well as MotoGP, which is coming later in the week. And we've also got uh, Motorsport Report, which covers NASCAR and uh, um, Speed Series and all that good stuff. So we're, we're, not, we're a lot more than just V8s, but V8, you know, that is our big primary focus, if that makes sense. Um, but... Uh, yeah, Baden, um, stick around, mate. We're going to be doing a lot more F1 content for sure, so um, feel free to hang around. <laughs> now, of course, this pod will be re-uploaded yeah. to YouTube tomorrow as well. Uh, sorry, predictions for China, Alex? To be brutally honest, I don't think they're going to be very similar to this week. What's a similar? Because the track... Yeah, the track is fast and flowing for mm. the most part. Oh, second, not so much, but the rest of it... Yeah, I don't know. And it's so hard to predict because they haven't been there for five years. Well, they haven't, they, like I said, these cars haven't been around there at all. Or well, even even better. So, like, <laughs> well, last... is when, when they were there last time, the the, the lowest Bottas dominance was happening. Yeah, exactly. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So now there's no, there's another dominance and it's probably going to be dominated by them too. So, yeah, see him. Look, I, I've, I've read a very long prediction list. It says Max wins. Mate, Whew. that's a bold statement. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no one saw that coming. Um, um yeah, look, I don't really have much to say. No, nah, well, 
Do you reckon you can come up with a top five? Hang on, I've got another one. It's going to be Sergio. Get ready. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Baden China suits Mercedes set up a lot. Um, yeah, obviously, like we said, it's they've got the new thing that you know did very well last time out. Um, but it'll be ven- very interesting to see how they go this time around. Um, hopefully, they do better. See what happens. Uh, Jared, I agree. Ricardo should have started on softs, um, like everyone else at the back. That's what cost him a good start. Uh, maybe he wouldn't have been in that position where Stroll and Albon was near him. So that's – RB like to screw up strategies a lot with Daniel sometimes, unfortunately. Alex, have you got your long list of predictions? Yeah, so Max wins. Yep. <laughs> if I had a chair, it would have been tipped over by now. <laughs> Williams crash. <laughs> and Alpine suck. No, nah, Alpine pole position, mate. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, legit though, I think the, I'm hoping there's a McLaren podium. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll have to I wait and see. Don't see. I don't really see the top three changing at all, to be honest. Well, I'm hoping I'm I'm gonna make a bold statement. We will get our first non one two. Good call. Hopefully. Good call. Um, I, I reckon right, this, yeah. Verstappen, it's hard to pass it. Max. If it's a track layout similar to Japan, because Japan suits uh, Red Bull quite nicely. So it's going to be a bit of a yeah. tricky thing um, unless Max has another brake issue or something like that. But I reckon mm, signs will be... I'm going to. I'm not copying my predictions from last time, but I reckon it's going to be very similar to that. <laughs> Uh, I reckon yeah. Max P1, Sainz P2, Perez P3, Leclerc P4, P5, Lando. I reckon. I have this weird feeling that neither Mercedes is going to finish in the points. You said that last time out too. <laughs> did I? Yeah, I you did. Seen. And all right, all right, no, no, no lowest points. I don't know. I feel like he just hates that car so much. Yeah, well, I mean, he has definitely not... It's not his 2019 car that he had at China that time. He probably wants that back. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. It'd probably be quicker. Um, Yeah. But, uh, no, it'll be very interesting for sure. I'm hoping, for the sake of Daniel, I hope he can actually get some points in China. I hope. Because if this goes by anything, this could be his last chance. Um, before losing his seat, if some of those articles are real. Um, obviously, nothing's confirmed and stuff like that, so we don't know if what's been said, what hasn't, but Daniel could potentially lose his seat at the end of uh, in a couple of weeks. So I guess we'll see what happens. I hope not. It'll be a sad, sad day. Oh, mate, I'm going to be... Oh, it just... Oh. It, feels, it, fu- it fumes me. That's not a phrase, but I've turned it into one. It's just like, yeah. Yeah, but uh, let's not end... We're all end... by it, aren't we? <laughs> exactly. Let's not end on a sad note. Let's uh, wrap this up before I go buy some tissues. But uh, thanks to everyone who has joined us tonight for our Japanese Grand Prix review. Obviously, if you haven't been able to catch this as a live stream, of course, it will be up uh, as a proper podcast tomorrow at 4.30pm. Uh, we'll be both on YouTube and Spotify, so be sure to check that out as well. Uh, stay tuned um, for our uh, Supercars preview, which will be coming uh, just on the week of Topor. And then, of course, we've got a busy week after that with F1 and supercars. But before that, this week, we've got our motorsport report, which will be covering the NASCAR races. Uh, and then we've got, uh, for all oh, from Martinsville. And then we've got uh, MotoGP, our quali-, quali review will be coming out Sunday. Uh, and then on Monday will be the race review. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, like I said, be sure to give us a like wherever you are listening or watching from, whether it's Spotify or YouTube. Uh, give us a five-star rating on Spotify. helps us get out there more. Check out all the links to our socials and Slipstream Autosports socials as well. All of that is in the description. Uh, any final thoughts, Alex, before we close tonight? No, busy couple of weeks ahead. Yeah. That's for sure. And uh, stay tuned for TikTok as well. We'll be covering some Brody Kostecki stuff, I'm sure, uh, as we know more. 
But uh, yeah, so thanks everyone who has joined. Hope you'll have a great evening. Enjoy the rest of your week and uh, subscribe and hope to see you more. Bye for now. <laughs>